it has officially been a year with my biggest purchase I have ever made and that is these bad boys right here but not the point I want to get into the pros and cons of them I did a whole entire vlog series where I took you guys through the surgery and the consultations before and the consultations after and the complications and my emotions of all of it but now it has been a year and the emotions have subsided a little and I've accepted they are what they're gonna be and I can get into the pros and cons in a easier manner than I could before. I got these done November 1st of 2022. It is officially zero days until implants. I did a countdown on TikTok. This is the outfit I have to wear. I have to have my hair up in the net, wear this gown, they give me special underwear and socks, but either way, I'm heading in there now. <laughs> It is now, let's see, November 25th of 2023. So it has been over a year. I don't know where the year went. Life has changed a lot since then. But either way, I want to get into the healing of it, the cost of it, what clothing is like, what the actual boobs are like. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of my own personal experience. So maybe you can get an idea of what the process will be like for you. Also, maybe you'll learn some things that you didn't realize about getting breast implants and maybe it'll make you feel differently about getting them or not getting them. Either way, I want to get into the healing process first. So the one thing with me that I probably didn't consider enough is that I am pale as heck. Whenever my skin is touched or manipulated, it gets red. You can see fingerprints. I probably don't heal in the best way as like other people might. It might hide better. And I didn't consider that when it comes to my scars. I chose to get my implants done on the bottom of like the breast line where the fold is. And one, they're not really big enough to fold over the scar. And in addition to that, they still look not as good as I would hope after a year. I'll actually show you guys what the scars look like. So this is a year post-op. And this side is doing a lot better. See, this side is kind of like what I thought it might be because I don't heal very well. I thought it might look like this. And like that's not that bad to me. It's still not as good as like other people's scars a year later, but this side did not do as well and it's had some troubles. And actually my scars are a lot better recently because I found this body wash that I find works really well on bringing down the redness of the scars and like the discoloration. So either way, they're a lot better than they were even like a month or two ago. I did the scar creams, but either way, that's something I probably didn't consider enough is my own body and my own healing. So you have to think about like, look at relatives that have gotten surgeries done. How do their scars look? If they fell, how well does it heal? Because everybody's skin is different. And even my doctor after my surgery was kind of surprised by like how much my skin gets red and irritated when it's like messed with. And then other than that, after surgery, like the healing process right after was much better than I thought. I feel like I look a little bit crazy, but not as crazy as I thought I would look. Though oddly enough, like talking is more tiring than I thought it was. Ooh, talking is hard. There's like, I was doing great when I first woke up from my nap, but now I'm just a little bit more tense <laughs> and tight in that area. And I just have to remember to breathe deep breaths and deep breaths help with the chest feeling, but either way, I am doing great. I feel like I understand surgery is a serious thing. It's not something to take lightly or do casually, but at the same time, I feel like going through that surgery was a lot less hard and difficult than I feel like a lot of people make it out to be, but maybe I'm just the rare case where I didn't really have like much pain or complications after I got back to regular life pretty quickly. I had to actually tell myself to like slow it down and not overdo it on my body. So after surgery healing, I found to be really easy for me, but it might not be the same for you. It might be after surgery is really hard for you, but your scars heal a lot better than mine do. The healing process is different for everybody and you just have to be aware of all of the possible outcomes so that you're not putting yourself in a position that you shouldn't be. Now, as for the cost of them, you have to shop around. So far, I've been quoted from one place near me and it was $12,500. And I was like, heck no. Another place was $9,500. But the national average is $4,516 and saline is cheaper than silicone. So all that 
information aside, they quoted me at $9,000. This place quoted me at the highest price I have seen so far. $16,000 to $19,000. That is way above the national average. I shopped around before I got mine done and I chose the fact that I wanted to be closer. If I went to another state, it's likely I could have gotten them for a much better cost and gotten a lot more like services along with it, maybe been taken care of after surgery. But I wanted something closer to me. So I shopped around a lot and I ended up paying $9,000 for my breast implants. And that included anesthesia, the surgery room. It didn't include medications, but medications weren't that expensive because I went through insurance. So it didn't cost that much. I just had to pay my copay and stuff, which was not bad at all. And if you don't have insurance that does like medications for surgeries that are elective, then that might be an additional cost you have to consider. But overall, mine were $9,000 in 2022. They might be more now. I would say for you specifically, depending on where you live, the prices are gonna be different, but shop around. Call a bunch of places and get quotes on the approximation of what they're gonna be. They don't per se like to give quotes and they like to say like, oh, it depends, like take a consultation, but now they charge for a lot of consultation. Unless you do a virtual one, then sometimes they don't charge for a virtual one, but they charge for an in-person consultation. And like, yeah, it goes towards the surgery, but if you don't wanna choose them, I don't wanna pay $500 for nothing. But the one nice thing about that $9,000, it might not be true for every doctor, but it seems like it's the regular thing, is that you get free follow-ups after your surgery. And I say free because it is factored, I'm guessing, into the cost of all of it. But I had to go back and see my doctor actually pretty regularly, more than you probably would have to because I did have one complication. I started like swelling and getting um, stretch marks and they were unusually like, they were swollen, swollen. Uh, they're in my previous vlogs, but either way. So I had a lot of follow-up appointments and I didn't have to pay for any of those. And normally if you're doing a follow-up with a doctor, you're paying your copay every single time. Uh, away from cost, let's get into some Something more fun and that's clothing and clothing has its pros and cons for sure like I was told by my doctor and other people like you're gonna fit so much better and stuff things are gonna look more full and like voluminous because you know like the girlies are there they're gonna make things look good and yes a lot of things I feel better a lot of my dresses that I thought fit me before surgery now actually fit me because I thought I would be like going up a dress size or something because I'm like no way could these bad boys fit in the dress before where I had none of this but yeah they fit in those dresses perfectly fine and easy and zip up. So now I'm like, oh, that's what the dresses were supposed to look like before. Good to know. But either way, that is not the case for everything. Other things, especially like baggy clothes, because now my boobs go out further than like my stomach does. But before like my stomach and boobs, there wasn't that much of a difference. So if I wore something baggy, it still laid pretty flat. But now if I wear something baggy because these stick out further, not as far as I might want them to, but either way, they stick out further so things just look baggier and I look bigger than I am. So I don't ever really wanna wear something unless it's form fitting because it's deceivingly doesn't look as good as it did before. So I avoid a lot of baggier stuff. I tuck in a lot more things just because I don't wanna look bigger than I am, but I know that's like a particular preference thing. But overall it's like, not all of your clothing is going to be an improvement. Your favorite dress might not be your favorite dress anymore because it might look weird with them like shoved in there or it just might not lay right because a lot of things like the, like the droopy neck doesn't lay as it should before and you might be accidentally flashing people where you wouldn't have been previously. So there's definitely pros and cons to it and I would also say depending on the rest of your measurements, it can be a con because sometimes tops are hard to find because I'm more petite everywhere else but if I'm a little bit bigger here, then it's like oh it doesn't really fit exactly right because there's not enough room in the bust but that's not the case most of the time most time it was the opposite where previously it was hard finding tops because I couldn't fill the bust and now I can fill the bust but at the same time they still feel small which brings me into the concept of the actual boobs that I got that sounds weird to say but my actual breasts how do I feel about them now that I've had them for a year 
So the biggest thing that I talked about in previous videos is that your anatomy plays such a large role in what your implants are going to look like. And I do not hear this in enough videos. And maybe it's because the people that got them had the perfect anatomy that fit exactly what they were looking for in breast implants. But that's not the case for everybody. It's, it might not be the case for you. Your anatomy might affect how your breast implants look in a negative way comparatively to what you wanted. So the thing about me is I have a larger chest bone. So like the bone right here, muscle bone, I think it's bone, chest bone right here. So my implants sit a lot further apart than the average bear. That is the quote from my surgeon. Cause I asked him that, I'm like, I don't want breast implants that are so far apart. I hate those photos. And he warned me like, hey, that actually might be the case for you. We bring the implant this way until your muscle stops. Okay. okay. So if your muscle is here, this is kind of the center most that your cleavage can get. Okay. okay. On both sides, right? Okay. Because so do you if, think I'm gonna have that like intense like center look? I think they I think they're gonna be a little wider than the average bear, but I'm gonna do my best to get them as close to the center. So you are gonna have some. Oh my like, that's a pretty gap. I was like that's a pretty big gap. Okay. The reason I can't go more more center is like what I talked about with the nipple, but also I would actually have to completely disrupt your pec muscle and that would risk actually the implant not only going too far to the center but actually crossing to the other side. Yeah, we don't want that. Which that's called synastia. So they have to place them appropriately with your anatomy and that meant that mine are a lot further apart than the average person And I hide it in tops like this So a lot of times I'll wear these like active or stretchy material tops because it'll shove them closer together But normally they sit kind of far apart and I'm not a fan of that because I don't often get cleavage like even now this shirt pushes my boobs a good amount together and like the most I get is like that and it's just from like one boob I don't really get it on the other boob, but not the point that doesn't give that like perky cleavagey look that I feel like a lot of people get when they get breast implants because it's like oh like this is what they're walking around looking like without a bra without a bra and I thought that was gonna be me. I thought this was gonna be what my boobs looked like without me literally like maneuvering them. I thought everybody got breast implants of this size would look like this. Because someone I went to high school with got breast implants like right before I did and she got a very similar size to me and she had less breast tissue than I did. So I thought, oh, my boobs are gonna look like hers are even better. That was not the case. Hers look like this when she walks around and mine do not. Mine look like that at most. And so either way, I had higher expectations on the look of things, even though I knew ahead of time because I had the discussion with my doctor on how things were gonna be placed. I think I still had higher hopes that my anatomy weren't gonna play such a large role and I was gonna get closer to that dream goal of this is why I spent the $9,000. This is why I'm spending the money. I want this like cleavage look. And I did not get that. No matter how much money I would have paid, I wouldn't have got that because your body does affect your results of the surgery. You can get the same surgeries as someone else and you will not look like them unless you have similar anatomy to the person that you were mimicking off of, the person that you wanted that end goal of. Now as for the feel of them, that might be a little bit of a weird topic to go into, but either way, I think they feel pretty natural. I got under the muscle and I also got that gummy bear-like texture, so I find them to be pretty realistic. I've had multiple people feel them. That sounds weird to say also. Like my partner said they were pretty realistic. It's not like they're like perfectly realistic. I feel like if you investigate enough, you could probably tell. And then I've had friends that have felt them that they're like, they feel pretty real. And I honestly think they do, but maybe I'm being naive and maybe people are just being nice to me and they really feel really fake. But to me, like, they, they feel pretty normal and nice and like don't feel like I have like a plastic bag in my boob or something. Now as for the look of them, I actually think they look a little bit more realistic than I per se wanted. I think I wanted more of that fake Tata look and I didn't want to admit it to myself that I wanted that fake Tata look and I did not advocate for that. I did not advocate for the fact that I wanted the fake Tata look. If I advocated for that, he probably would have done high profile and done things a little Bit differently than what we did but I think it's best for the long run because in the long run I probably want breast implants that look more realistic and don't look like I'm walking around with fake tatas but in the moment when I'm younger and I'm spending the money I kind of want to feel like oh I got my money's worth oh look at them tatas but at the same time in the long run I probably want them to look 
realistic and look like I didn't have fake ones. They're just natural. And a lot of people have told me like they look really natural. I've had multiple OBGYNs that have said they look natural because Astro, what are you doing? So overall, are they exactly what I wanted? No, they're not. But do I regret them? No, I don't. I think it was the right decision for me and it worked out to be the best way it should for the long run. I would say the pros of it are definitely the fact that certain like dresses and stuff like that, certain outfits, I look a lot more full. And in general, I look a lot more full when I'm naked. Now the cons of it, I would definitely say is my body did not heal that well when it comes to the scars but they did heal very well when it came for after surgery yes i had some weird complication stuff but other than that i didn't really have much pain i didn't really have much like more serious things go wrong for the most part i healed very well and very quickly except for the scars and this random swelling thing and overall the money i think was worth it i would have paid a lot more going to another doctor and i think it would have been a lot more inconvenient to go to another state or another country for that matter now as for the actual boobs yes they're pretty far apart but it could be worse and i think i can hide it in certain tops and overall i'm just not going to get that cleavage look that i per se want on a regular basis but that's not the end of the world There's they're still a lot more full and filling than they were before and they feel pretty gosh darn natural and look pretty gosh darn natural in my opinion and the opinions of others that I have been told but maybe to you they look very unnatural and they feel very unnatural but I think they work for what I was looking for and overall I think it was the best decision for me but I definitely don't think it's a decision to take lightly I definitely recommend watching my consult videos watching my surgery videos watching my videos after after surgery and how the recovery went in those consultations and just get an idea of what the whole entire journey was like when I was going through it because like I said now it's been a year the emotions aren't running high I'm not living it so it's not as intense to me but back then it was more intense I was going through it all so you can kind of see what that's like and what it might be like for you but overall have a great rest of your morning evening night whatever it is for you I'll see you Wednesday